All right, this is a uh, quick video on how to get started with the sprite tools in Sandbox. First, what you're going to want to do is come over to the library manager and install it by going down to the available section. And you'll find right here, sprite tools by face punch. I'll just hit install on that. Wait for this to download. You'll be able to tell if everything installed correctly. If you go to create a new object, add a new component, type sprite. And if you see the 2D sprite component, then you've done everything successfully. So for now, I'm just going to delete everything from this scene, except for the sun and the camera. And then I'm going to go to the top right and enter the 2D view. And then when I click on the camera, I'm going to go to scene and align to view to make the camera uh, top down, bring it to zero, zero on the X and Y, maybe bring this up to like 400. And now we have everything set up for a nice 2D game. So let's start by creating our first sprite. There's a few ways to do this. First way is very simple, and it's by just creating a new asset. And it's a new 2D sprite. Um, that'll just create an empty sprite. The other way is to just go over to an image or images that you already have. Uh, and you can select one, right click it, and uh, create a 2D sprite from it. Or if you have multiple sprites, uh, you can create multiple uh, individual sprites or create one sprite using the uh, different images individual frames. So what I'll do is exactly that, but I'll just uh, save this to my assets folder. I'll call this player 01, because this will be my first little test player. And you can see it, that animation was just created here. Um, but yeah, here you can see now that I've double clicked on the sprite, it's open the sprite editor. Uh, and in here, you can view the different animations in the sprite, the different frames in that animation, uh, and then a little inspector for some uh, variables within the animation. To change the name of an animation, uh, since this is a read only uh, field here, you can either double click to quickly rename it. So I'll name this idle, or you can right click rename. All right, this idle is a bit fast. So I'm going to slow it down to about 10, um, maybe eight. That looks pretty good. Uh, now this origin point uh, is going to be where he emanates from. So you can see when I have the sprite placed in the scene here, uh, the origin point is currently in the center. So that's where our gizmos are placed. So moving this origin point is kind of like the offset of the image from the origin. So I like to place this at the bottom and there's a little button here to just quickly do that. Um, and you can also just manually change these numbers if you'd like. And while you're moving, you can hold control to move off of the grid instead of having it snap. Um, but the reason why I like to put this at the bottom uh, for a 2D character that's standing up like this, uh, it means that when I scale the character, it's going to scale around this point. This is obviously great for a little squash and stretch. If you're a 2D character and you jump on the ground, you flatten down and then slowly even back out. But obviously you can do whatever you'd like with the origin point. Each animation has its own set origin point. So you'll have to make sure they're uh, the same on each if they are the same on each animation or uh, you can change it if that applies. So let's go ahead and create our next animation. Uh, this is going to be our walk. And I can come down here, click on this plus button. And now I can come in and search. I believe it is just player. No, I think it's sausage. There we go. And I can control scroll to zoom in, get all my run sprites here, hit enter. And uh, we can see it imported just fine. That's way too fast. Make this, uh, I think it was eight on the other one. There we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and exit this sprite editor and create a new sprite now. Uh, you might have noticed at the top here, there's an import sprite sheet button separate from the uh, import individual frame button. And clicking on this will allow you to select a sprite sheet. So I'm going to go over here to our ninja frog. And I'm going to select the idle animation. And here you can see it pulls up that sprite sheet here. Uh, and it has this little uh, white square indicating that first frame. Uh, I can increase the number of frames. And you'll see it goes down vertically by default. It's because you'll have to specify the number of rows that are in your sprite sheet. So you can see with seven frames here and three rows, it'll import the seven frames like such. Uh, since our sprite sheet is entirely uh, horizontal. We can just adjust this frames per row. And as we increase it, it will bring our number of frames up with us. And once we hit the max of the 
image, it'll automatically go down for us. So we know we've reached our limit here with 11. So let's change it to that. And there we go. You can see it's split up each of these nicely. And your uh, frame might not be 32 by 32 by default. So you'll have to just uh, play with this until you can see that the visual lines up and everything looks right. And you can just go ahead and import the sprite sheet. Um, some other settings here are the cell offset. So um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and then similarly, a pixel offset, if you want to get really precise with it. Same with separation, if you want to have a little gap between uh, each of the sprites, if your sheet is like that. Um, it's very easy to set up. All right, so let's import it for real. Um, I'm going to set my work into the bottom here, make sure that my animation is looping. And I'm going to hit play here. And it looks pretty good to me at 15 frames. I think I'll leave it like that. Before we jump back into the scene, I'm just going to show off the rest of these sprite editor features with another sprite here. Uh, this character has an idle, a walk, and an attack. And uh, let's uh, get started by adding some what are called broadcast messages to our walk animation. What a broadcast message does is allow you to fire an event on a specific frame of animation. So what we can use that for is footstep events. So as our character walks through, the second that he puts his foot on the ground, which is this frame right here, five, I can add a broadcast message, footstep. It's kind of hard to see when it's zoomed out like that. So you can see it right here, footstep. Uh, if I wanted, I could add another uh, high, and it is going to include both of those broadcast messages. Uh, but I only want the one. So I'll just have this footstep event here, and we'll look for the next footstep, which is right here on frame 12. And it seems like it loops after that. So that's looking good. We can hook that up with some action graph or some code later. It's also going to be super useful for our attack here because our attack animation uh, kind of doesn't really do the attack until the very end of the animation, but not on the end of the animation. So we don't want it to fire on animation end. We want it to fire on the frame that he actually fires, which is, a, yep, right here, right here on frame eight, we can add attack, maybe I'll call it fire, because that is him setting off a, a fire. But since we also want the bullet to come from the snout of our enemy, we can add what's called an attachment. There's a few ways you can do that you can right click wherever you'd like to add the attachment and add the attachment. I'm going to call this the snout. And the other way is to simply add an attachment through this list, uh, you can recolor it, uh, and the gizmo will change to that color. Um, but I don't want this other attachment, I just need this one for the snout. So what I can do is now that I've placed it, I can go frame by frame and make sure that its position is correct. And now if I hit play, you can see that object or that uh, attachment is going to follow exactly where I placed it. So we've created these three beautiful sprites now. Uh, you can click on them and view their different animations in the inspector if you'd like. You can see these beautiful creatures we've made. And uh, if we just drag them into our scene, when we're in the 2D view or the 3D view, it will just simply create the objects that we need, uh, which is just a game object with the 2D sprite component with the sprite set to our sprite. All right, so let's have a look at the 2D sprite component. I'm just going to go through uh, all the relevant options one by one. The first one's super useful for the 3D view. If you're making a 3D game that uses 2D sprites, similar to something like Paper Mario, uh, if you wanted your character to always be upright like this, but you didn't want him to have a weird rotation offset of 90, you wanted him to just maintain a rotation of zero, uh, you can change the up direction to the Z direction. And now he will face upright. Very, very nice. Something else that's useful for 3D while we're here is you can't see the back of a sprite by default, uh, but you can add a sprite flag to draw the back face. And what that's going to do is put it mirrored on the opposite side, um, which allows you to do stuff like this. Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Seeing the sprite flags here, you also get options to mirror or rather flip the sprite both vertically horizontally or both we also get a playback speed variable which allows us to increase the speed of the animation that's playing and you can see if i 
change the animation to the walk here. He's walking forward, but if I make a negative animation, he will actually walk backward. Animation will play backwards. And then, of course, speed of zero will freeze the animation. The tint is going to remove color from the sprite, uh, similarly to uh, the tint on a model renderer. So setting this tint to red is technically setting the green and blue values to zero. So it's removed all the green and blue values and has only left the red values of our sprite. Dissimilarly, the flash tint is going to replace. So if I set the uh, color to red here, it's going to make all of the pixels hard red. It's going to set them all to that red color. And the alpha is like a mix. It's a mix of how much of the color you've set to the original colors you'd like. So you can use this to flash a sprite red when it's in danger. Uh, or you could have a little, you know, well, green glow when you're healed, or you can flash white when you're taking damage, uh, or even use it uh, to create an all-black silhouette. So lots of, lots of things you can do with this. Then as you saw earlier, you can change the current animation that's being played just by selecting it from the drop-down. This will automatically show you the animations uh, for the sprite that you have specified. So changing the sprite to the frog will now only show the animations of the player frog. And you can see the broadcast events do the same. I don't have any broadcast events on the frog, so none show up. But as soon as I bring my trunk character in, I have the footstep and fire events available to me as actions. If I switch to the walk animation, I can quickly come in here to the footstep from our 2D sprite component, transform, position, play a sound at this position and that sound will be a footstep sound and you can see instantly that our action graph is firing and you get a nice visual feedback for it doing so this is super useful for getting things such as sound effects up and running instantly without having to worry about any code but keep in mind that because this method runs in the editor, that you shouldn't be doing anything like creating particles or, or any other game objects for that matter, unless you're wrapping it around a game dot is playing check just to make sure that you're not creating a bunch of junk in your editor. So if you remember, I created an attachment point on this trunk character. Uh, that was on the shoot animation, but I also off camera made one on the idle animation. So if I go ahead and create the attach points, very similarly to a skinned model renderer, you'll see it create a little bone object here. And if I show the gizmo on that, you'll see it updates as the sprite does. Now we can reference this game object whenever we need to fire from this position and we'll instantly have its transform. Optionally, you can opt out of creating the object and instead getting the transform through code. All right. So let's create a little player controller really quick just to show off how you can make something with the sprite system. I'm going to drag in the frog sprite. Zero them out. I'm going to create a player component. So getting a character that is going to move is going to look as simple as this. I'm not going to go over this code too quickly just because it's not really uh, too important to our sprite tutorial. But what we want to do specifically is get this guy animating, you know, to look the part. So let's do that on update function. And I'll call this update animations. So what we can do in here is say if our velocity dot length is greater than zero, that means our velocity is anything but zero. We're moving at all. We can tell our sprite to play the animation walk. We could also tell the sprite to set our playback speed to velocity.length divided by our speed. That way, if someone was using an analog stick uh, on controller and they only pushed the stick halfway, then the character's animation speed would match the movement speed. Then we can say sprite dot sprite flags equals velocity dot x less than zero, then we will flip it. Otherwise, there will be no sprite flags. And then otherwise, we can say the sprite 
should play the idle animation and it should probably play it at the speed of one. Whoops, that's the wrong thing. Playback speed should be one. Now if we come into our game, if I move around here, you'll see that he faces the direction we move and he animates when we're moving and idles when we're not. Now let's hook up some footstep events in code. What we can do for that is just protected override void on start. We'll probably do this in our on awake too because we are getting the sprite in our require component, but I like doing this on on start just in case. Say sprite uh, on broadcast event on broadcast event. We'll make our own on broadcast event string name. And then if name is footstep, we can oops, sound dot play. Um, I think we got UI dot error. I think that's a sound at our position. Okay, I was incorrect about UI dot error. Well, I know we got UI dot button dot press. So let's give that a shot. Beautiful. So only when we're walking. Oh, you can see the playback speed changing there when we move diagonally because I'm not normalizing that velocity. So let me just quickly do that. Now, finally, what I'm going to do is just make it so when I press space, he will take damage or rather play that animation. So what I'll do here is say if input dot pressed jump sprites dot play animation hurt. And you'll see if I press the button, it's kind of like stopping the animation for like a second, but it's not starting the hurt animation. It's just kind of resetting the idle animation or the walk animation, if that's what I'm in. The reason for this is because the animation is getting reset immediately afterward. Uh, so what we want to do is in our update animations, say if sprite.currentAnimation.name equals hurt, then we should return. Let it do its thing. And you'll see now, if I press the button, we'll take damage. But when we take damage, we never stop taking damage. So we need to add an event in this on animation complete event. Back in our code, we can simply subscribe to the on animation complete the same way. If name equals hurt, oops, then we will play it. Then we will play the original idle animation. Now, for walking around, we take damage. Once it finishes, we go back to our update animations function. And same with if we're standing still. So hopefully that helps out. Hopefully that is some sort of insight into getting started with this. And uh, hopefully people make some cool stuff with it. Send it my way if you do. Um, either here or on Twitter or X, the everything app. You know how it is.